Oh, <laughs> okay. Hello there, everybody. What's going on? Jamie Sentley here. It is the Midweek Strategy Webinar. This is uh, September 12, 2018. Uh, can you guys hear me? Can you see the screen? Hello, Pooja, Peter, Ty, Iman, Pete, Jaya. What's going on, everybody? Okay, great. So first things first here. Um, Hopefully you did see the um, the update from Michael, and he is out of the hospital, so he should be joining us hopefully next week at some time. I don't know, um, I don't know when you know or what his webinar schedule is going to look like, like right off the bat. But I do know that he will be you know back uh, and you know in back in the working world so to speak or whatever so looking forward to you know having him back of course and uh, thank you everybody for uh, any thoughts and prayers and all that stuff while he was away so yes Mike will be back uh, hopefully again starting starting next week um, all right back to our matters immediate matters at hand here so we are looking at the US dollar and the big thing to watch is the same thing that really we've kind of been focused on for a while, and that is the lower channel line. So um, this channel itself, right, which is just going back to the to the early June low, that channel has been really the, the, the place or the levels to watch, not just support and resistance, but even within it, right? I mean, this has really been um, what – He's kind of guided us, or I should say at least me, uh, in terms of dollar direction and short-term pivots, right? So you can see here uh, the center line resistance, resistance was looking there, uh, didn't quite get there. That could actually be a sign of, um, of you know, of, of a weakening um you know, weakening trend, right? So weakening within the structure itself because you're not able to get up into resistance. Right? We've talked about that concept at times uh, in our slope analysis, and you would cut, you would call that a gap, right? So you get a gap uh, when you, you know, the market gets a bearish gap when it's unable to get to resistance. A bullish gap would be if you're looking for support in the bottoms before the support. It just means that the market is exceptionally strong, or in this case, uh, potentially weak, um, right? Uh, heading into now, heading into its its potential support. So uh, we are focused, um, you know, very very much focused on the trend line. Okay, which tried to break for a time at the very end of August. Here we are now about two weeks later, and we are kind of pressing into it once more. So not only is it the trend line, it's also the four-hour 200 period average, uh, which you know has been more or less the support since early June along with this trend line. So you got ECB tomorrow, you got BOE um, big events and, you know, whatever happens with them, uh, whatever they come out and say, the point is that what you really want to watch is this, right? We can break below here. I'm looking for us to head, uh, lower. Ty's talking about CPI as well. Yes. Uh, the, the bigger events are probably going to be the, the central bank meetings, but absolutely there is CPI as well. Um, as you guys know, I'm not, one to really pay too much attention to the you know intricacies of the data, but we uh, do want to know when those events are coming out, okay? Because we don't want to be caught blindsided, of course, by volatility. So that is why we look at things like an economic calendar. All right, so we know what to look for. I'm just looking for a break lower. That's it. So you know you do want to know that dollar is kind of coming into a support region, uh, but uh with the lower high up here and you know the potential i say the risk the big move risk is to the downside in my opinion all right moving on then uh euro we are right at 
This is a bit sloppy, kind of there's a lot going on here. Apologize for that. Um, I can bring in a little different chart here. All right. Came into the week looking for uh, three legs down. At this point, since we've kind of scraped the lows here, um, you know, on Monday, uh, very early Monday, uh, not sure if that's going to happen, right? I mean, a, a more elongated type of correction is always possible, but we get that, you know, dollar break. I mean, it's pretty hard. At that, it's going to be hard at that point to to to, to think that we actually have um, some more downside um, near term in in the euro. So, look, I this to me is the break level. So it's more or less kind of the same, probably about the same level as like if you were to break U.S. dollar, um, and it's really close. It's like in 20 pips. So, you know, we could say that. Heading into ECB tomorrow is obviously a difficult situation. You don't want to necessarily be, you know, going balls to the wall long right into resistance. Um, but I would simply watch the, you know, the channel here. I mean, this is your resistance line. You get above it, right? That's what we'd want to see as far as providing support at some point, right? So let's say we get a big move above it. You come back and you test it, support. Great, that's a long setup. Let's say you pull off a little bit. Uh, I'd watch the center line right here, okay? Right around 116. Uh, month open, by the way, is 1597. So, you know, if we can pull back and maybe test support on this, which again was resistance um, this morning during Europe, this was right here, okay? So I'm getting really short term here, but look, you know, sometimes that's kind of, what you need to do. I mean, the markets, the ranges have been super tight. Um, there's not a lot to work with. So, you know, we're analyzing the market um, from the standpoint of, of, you know, kind of what it's giving us, right? Not trying to project some like fantastical uh, move here. Like I do think that the market eventually breaks higher, right? Uh, just like I think the dollar breaks lower, but in the interim, you know, until something like that happens, what we've really got to be focused on is that 116, okay, for potential support heading into ECB tomorrow, okay? You want to know what you would do or what your where your mind would be if, you know, the market pulls back a little bit, 116 is where you want to look, and, and or if it breaks out through this resistance line, right? At that point, you probably want to go bullish, right? You probably want to go bullish and be aware that you're going to have Actually, not even there. I'd look more like you might get something at 116.74. That is the um, that's the square root level. But in any case, get rid of this thing. In any case, uh, you get through there, and the big level, the next big level on the upside, is probably 17.50, right? That is your longer term channel line, okay? So again, that's the channel line that goes all the way back to the March low, was resistance in May, and right up here. Okay, so um, using these levels, lines, all that good stuff, we'll be formulating a uh, trading strategy heading into ECB, okay, uh, tomorrow. All right. Let's take a look at the British pound, because again, we've got BOE tomorrow as well, and that's going to be first on the docket so take a look real quick and see what some stocks are doing got some good energy stocks on the move here apple right here we're going to take a look at that actually in a second All right, so British pound, let's scroll out and look at our fork that goes all the way back to the high um, from January, right? And we kind of double topped back in April and then, holy moly, 
cable fell apart. So the center line, the median line of this has been hit the last couple of uh, days. So actually starting on Monday and we've been trading on it now for three days. So um, it's a pretty good dividing line, right? I mean, you've been trading on it for three days. I think that gives it some validity. Would you probably you'd agree with that? Um, now the line that I would look, if you got a pullback, okay. And again, we don't know what's going to happen. This is the, this is the great part. I think this is my, what I love about analyzing a market for trading purposes. Um, we don't know what's going to happen, right? But what we can do is we can kind of like set scenarios and we can set scenarios and say what we would want to do or how we would potentially react okay or want to react if those scenarios played out because you don't want to you know just be staring at your chart and have no idea like you know if martin this you know martin you just all start to start reacting right you don't want to necessarily do that um you want to have an idea of where the market would go it gives you more confidence that once if it starts to happen then you're going to you know have more confidence to to act so in this case this line here which i guess you know we call this the 25 line and this is the 75 line uh i guess you could call this the 62 and a half line um that would be your parallel that really where if you got you know a sharp decline on boe right and again we don't know what the reaction is going to be but if you got a sharp decline on boe that would be like your dream buy at 129 okay because not only is it that 62 and a half line we'll call it but it's also the lower parallel from the bullish fork that starts back at the august low okay so again if you get that uh and the you know the center line here the median line of the of the bullish fork has been more or less resistance as well you know we've had a lot of spikes into it and everything um so again if you got something like that and look you know 100 pip move uh spike on boe is is really not that uncommon right we boe has a tendency to uh kind of send it up every which way uh by the same token if we break to the upside then at some point in the future you're looking for the median line to provide support to take you higher okay with the next big big upside level probably being around 132 um 70 or so okay that's you see the red line up here If you remember, that is actually the line from the 2017 lows. So that's where I'm looking. The question, of course, is do we drop to 129 first? Okay. Um, obviously, you would love to get something like this because you get a hell of a reward to risk setup on this. Um, but you know, just have to wait until the morning and see what wants to, see what wants to happen. Okay. Whoa. There goes Euro trying to break out. So I do my webinar. Trade talks. There we go. Trade talks. Everyone loves a good trade talk. All right. So moving along. Um, Dollar Swiss, a little bit kind of in the dark uh, on that at the moment. We did, I talked about yesterday potentially getting a, um, maybe this is a B wave drop, like right now. We're looking at an hourly chart now, right? So if you got, if we can halt, halt here, so to speak, and then, you know, get a bounce, um you'd be looking at two equal legs up around this region in the 9820s we go to a four hour chart again i'm it's hard to believe this 
just so from the sense of I guess like you know if you're if you're going to get a bigger dollar break like a more immediate break um then you know it's kind of tough to think that you're going to get a hundred pip rally in dollar swiss but i mean if you go things go really risk on i guess you know certainly a possibility either way um you know would love to see three legs up get resistance up here uh near 98 and then you'd be able to take it lower again so kind of where my head's at on that one we're seeing the Chinese market really start to take off here on the upside. Hold on for a second. Settle. All right. So, okay. What we're going to look at now here is let's go back to this. Sorry for a second, hold on here. Okay, so there's Dollar Swiss. That's where our head's at there potentially. Um, all right. On the move here in Euro, by the way, so what we were just talking about, so look, if we, we've, we're breaking out right now, okay? Um, we start to break to the upside on this. Okay, you get up 1670s, whatever, and you get a pullback. I'll be putting an order to buy here. Okay, um, that's just all there is to it. So expect an overnight order, presuming that Euro holds this breakout, right? We're going to wait, obviously, for a good break um, and for Euro to, you know, close up here you know fav you know on the day or whatever you don't want to start chasing spikes intraday especially before ecb all right moving on so dollar yen right into support i think we were looking at 111.25 and there it goes okay so 111.25 support. Uh, might have a pretty good low here. I mean, that's all there is to it. Again, I'd probably rather trade Euro Yen or Aussie Yen or CAD Yen or Kiwi Yen or Pound Yen. You get my drift, right? I'd rather trade something Yen, probably Euro Yen, because that setup itself, well, we already hit, we said yesterday in the update, watch for support near 129. Now we're on our way. We have a broken wedge. Uh, we'll be looking to leave an order, say 129.50. Uh, stop, say 128.90. Probably should have put on an order this morning, but we just retested that wedge this morning, and now we are on the upside, on the up and up. So Euro Yen looking good. Uh, wedge breakout. You are looking at potentially getting something like this. I mean, this could be a really big move. Wedge breakout, your target is up at 134, believe it or not. And that would be up around the 75 line of this so-called new bullish fork, okay? So Euro Yen on the upside, I love it. I think it's a great setup. Um, Again, 
probably support around 129.50 and you can stop out at 128.90 for you know try to catch a flyer so expect an order there uh, at some point soon probably later today or maybe tonight the one thing that I did think or that I did find interesting so this was the Nikkei right we were looking at the Nikkei and I did tweet this out earlier I mean, I mean, it looked like this was going to be a textbook A, B, C. Now this little Chinese news thing just came out and, you know, there you go. So that might be it. Um, I have a feeling that Trump and them, they saw the NASDAQ down the amount it was. They're not going to allow that to happen, right? So. That's probably your clearest pattern in terms of um, of equity markets. Another a thing that I need to um, that I want to bring up as well. I was going to do this at the end, but we might as well just do it now. Is I've been working on. Let's start here. Let's start with. All right, this is the NASDAQ daily chart, okay? NASDAQ composite daily. Notice the channel from the February low, right? Now, if I do that same channel, Let's scroll all the way back, all the way back to the 20s. Okay, so we're going to draw a similar channel here. All right, so you see this channel here? With these lows, All right? Look at the comparison. Riding on the 75 line, dropping right down into the median line. Riding on the 75 line, dropping into the median line. Right, the thought process here is that those two might be somewhat similar. So what I did was I matched it up on Excel, not just matching, but actually with Excel. And this is what it looks like. So your 1929 is in blue and your orange is now. It actually says that we might be about to enter the most insane part of the rally, right? And it's kind of interesting that we're talking about this right now at this exact second because we have turned up so sharply just now. Um, go to the cues, right? We've turned up so sharply just like in the last couple minutes that I, you know, I kind of find it interesting. It could be actually starting like right now, so. Something to um, consider, keep in mind, whatever. Uh, and, you know, think about what we what we just saw or what we're looking at in terms of um, in terms of FX. So like Euro Yen, you know, which 
has a very bullish kind of look to it, right? With an impulse, obviously a very clean five wave rally off the lows. There's three wave drop, plays out like a wedge, break out of the wedge, pull back, retest. I mean, it seems very risk on, right? While the whole world is scared, uh, you know, to hell and thinks that the market's about to crash. It really, we've just pulled back sharply, but we've pulled back into support on the NASDAQ. And I've said for a little bit, you know, that the NASDAQ's the one to watch because of Apple and everything like that. Um, so really, we it, there, the comparison with the 29, the understanding of, you know, Euro yen and what that means as far as potential for, you know, upside, the five wave rally in the Nikkei, um, you know, the dollar on the verge potentially have a bigger breakdown. That should support emerging markets. I mean, we've got a lot going on here, right? We've got a lot going on for a potential uh, kind of rip on the upside in so-called risk, if you want to, if you want to put it that way. Okay. All right. So there's my spiel on macro for the moment. Um, let's take a look at kind of. Let's look at look at the commodity currencies. Oh, actually, sorry. Before we do that, I did want to take a look at Apple. So, you know, what's the largest company in the world? Right, it's Apple. This is the trend, or this is the channel. So, you know, if you if you want to or have an idea of where the market's headed, I think Apple's a good idea to look at. So Apple actually started, it broke out here on 816. So this was a channel from the February low, basically drawing the same channel as we drew in the NASDAQ, um, Feb, you know, February low, April low. Channel was resistance, breakout, comeback, re, not quite a retest. So, you know, I would love to see if we get a little more of a retest on this, like, you know, come back and test two two sixteen or so. Uh, it, it'd be great, uh, and then you can go for the last leg or something. But either way, this is just the chart to to know or to follow in Apple. Okay. And woo, this is a stock that I'm following. IQ is the Chinese tech stock. That thing just went through, is going through the roof right now. All right, back to FX. So um, we want to look at the commodity currencies. Yes, yes, we do. All right. We will start with the Australian dollar. So um, you do have tonight, isn't it? Is it employment? Yes, it is. Aussie employment tonight at 830. I hope to be around during this. I just don't know because I'm going to I've got a, a family uh, thing, event, whatever you want to call it, that I do have to be present for. So uh, I don't I'm not positive whether or not I will be, you know, there. Um, or here, sorry. Dollar testing, but you know all the stuff we're looking at here tell you know suggests to me that we probably want to be uh, airing on the side of dollar weakness. Um, as far as the Aussies concerned, we were looking at the lower channel 70s, 60s early in the week. We we haven't gotten there. We've turned before it, and you know, your your test here, so like tonight, the levels that I would pay attention to are going to be, you know, kind of probably like, you know, up here, maybe the spike up here, right? Yeah, there you go. So that, that would be in, right in line with the center line. But 72.20 or so, okay, 
Um, that's going to be a spot to pay attention to. Um, you know, pullback at some point, 7130s are going to be support. The best way to trade this, I think, is probably not going to, probably going to be nothing to do tonight. Um, because look, what you want to see is you'd like to see kind of we could go to an hourly now. It's a four hour chart. You'd like to see a five wave rally unfold here, right? To suggest that you've got a bigger low in, right? So you got you'd like to see, you know, like a you know, a one, two, three, four, five, something like that, right? And then you can get a pullback and then maybe, you know, we get support. Okay. So I hope you like my drawing. Uh, but this is what something I'd be looking for. Okay, just like this, or something like that, right? Nothing ever plays out perfectly, but if we start to get more volatile markets, a lot of times that really clarifies what's going on with the pattern. So, um, look, that's that's what I'd be looking for in terms of a a bigger picture long. So, all that said, you do have the center line up here, right? So for a quick trade, a quick scalp, whatever, this might be actually a level to fade, right? 72.20. Me personally, not really down with that, uh, considering that here we are and we testing, testing, testing this US dollar, you know, trend line, support, average, all that stuff. And if this is gonna break, man, like this, like watch out, like this might really start to go. So um, not really trying to fade that side after we're, you know, starting to, starting to actually see the break, then, you know, you start to really try to, you start to outsmart yourself and really screw up there. So not trying to do that. Um, but yeah, we'll, you know, these are the levels and looking for that five up and then maybe a pullback and then buy. Okay. Uh, moving on to Kiwi. The Kiwi channel, low, 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 did not, just like Aussie, right, did not quite get there. Now, here's the thing. This bold line, this is the weekly reversal support, okay? That is the line or the level, I should say, all the way back to uh, 2015, I believe. Yeah, that was the low in 2015. That's the weekly close of that low. That is going to be at 64.53. That's 100 pips lower. Uh, we were 50 pips lower than that at one point. I don't know if you're going to get there. That would seem a lot um, to get down to that point. Um, from from here, especially talking about the dollar break stuff. Uh, but really, the message here is kind of the exact same as it is with Aussie. And that is we're looking for a nice five-wave move off the low. Okay. Uh, we start to see, you know, we, if we start to get that, we start to see that five wave move that we'll be on the lookout to buy a pullback just like the Australian dollar. OK. So things may be starting to take shape here a little bit um, in so far as the dollar finally turning. OK. All right, let's look at a couple different things. Let's look at gold and uh, let's look at, at oil. So gold, I mean, what a beaut. Gold, absolutely beautiful um, in terms of that pink line, that magenta line, right? I mean, how great is that? This line, we've talked about it a lot over the last couple of weeks and lucky to have identified it at a pretty early point um and you know the fact that we were looking for kind of support there and we've gotten it now a couple times over the last three or so weeks so right here and right here again just yesterday and we are now just like us dollar is challenging its four hour you know 200 average so too is the is gold right and you know you've got yourself maybe a little little wedge here of sorts right so um, you could certainly see some explosive upside in terms of gold here your next big test probably going to be around this 1230 level that's just a, that's just off these highs 
right? But obviously much greater bullish potential over the coming weeks and months. And let's not forget uh, what this looks like, right? So the levels that we've we've rallied from here in this pink line, okay, double bottomed on it back in December 2015, right? Bottomed on it here back in 2008, right? Formed a bullish base. Back on it back here in 2006, all right? Lots of support on this, okay? And then even resistance back in 2005 and 2004, or three, sorry. So good signs in terms of gold finally maybe turning the corner here uh, for something more than, you know, a day, right? Okay, so that is a good sign. Silver. Look, my, I've still not, um, oh, I just got an alert on Tesla. Why would that be? Oh, there you go. Silver. For me, I still have to have it above this $15.05 marker, which is, again, that's the equivalent. That's the long-term parallel for silver, okay? Uh, I don't see, you know, my belief is that silver is going higher, but, you know, the market does not care about my belief at, at all. Um, and look, gold's acting better, so I might as well stick with gold. Silver gets back above here, great. We'll go with, we'll go with silver. You know, you don't need to be first. Okay, it's better to be right than be first. So uh, wait for silver to establish itself back above this line. And then, you know, more than happy to talk about silver. But as it is now, nothing to do there. Okay, crude. We identified the five up, the three down in crude at 67 a couple of days ago last week. Beautiful. Crude's really getting on its horse here. Um, certainly, I'm sure that it helps that we just had, you know, uh, or that we have this Hurricane Florence or whatever coming through. Um, but, you know, the pattern's the pattern, and this was published way before any of that stuff has happened. So, um, you know, headlines, schmedlines, whatever wants to be attributed to it is fine with me. I don't care. Uh, I do know that crude is, you know, reacting to technical levels quite well. So, you know, from here... My guess is that we head into some sort of a short-term top. Two legs up from that would be 73.80, okay? So a spike up into 73.80 might be something, uh, you know, to um, keep in mind, okay, for crude oil. But that's, that's where my head's at there. So I'm not looking for much beyond there at this point okay all right so um, that's really all I've got today. I don't have a lot. Oh, we didn't even look at dollar CAD. I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay. So dollar CAD unfortunately missed our entry on the short side by about 10 pips. Um, no change to the last night's call slash analysis, what, what have you, that – the big test is going to be 29.30, right? This is that 2012 trend line, okay? This has been the big support test all the way back to May, um, so it's still going to be. And, you know, near term, if I were to scroll in here, go short term chart, hold on here. Go to a four hour chart first.
Pooja asking about Euro Aussie. Absolutely. We've got plenty of time, guys. So um, you let me know, you know, what you want to look at. Be happy to look at, uh, you know, whatever. So, all right, here's a four hour chart. Choppy decline, three waves. I've, you know, I know this is an impulse, right? But the thing why I was saying like that, that we had turned down for a bigger move is that this is three down. So like you've got ABC three down, um, three up, just sloppy up, right? But three down, so this could just be ABC flat. Either way, whatever, let's just identify levels. We don't have to worry about what the exact freaking wave count is and all that stuff. Uh, so my idea here is let's try to find the angle that the market's trading on from the high up here. Well, we already got this one. Okay. Get that. That might be a little kind of broken at this point. Um, so is there a fork that we can maybe draw? You know, that is kind of hideous, but if we draw a standard fork, we actually have Maybe something to work with here, maybe. Um, you know, this would kind of put your resistance up around the, basically where we were kind of looking before, essentially, you know, 3080 to maybe 3131. Um, if we could get something like that, uh, I think, you know, I wouldn't, again, I'm not, I don't want to chase right here. This is a little too risky chasing here. If we would have gotten in up here, awesome, let it run. But as it stands now, we still might get a shot. You know, if you go 60 minute chart here, I mean, you can see this is, you got a wave one down, a two up, and then you've got a clean five down, right? So even if this is, first of all, we don't know. This could be an ABC. I don't think it is. I think it's probably one, two, this is wave three, and then you're going to, get a pop in four. So even a pop in four, right? Let's say that this little spike right here is kind of the end of it. You know, you're talking about getting back to 3070 region anyway, which is 38.2. And then the top of this uh, former fourth wave consolidation, basically today's high is at 3080. So, you know, I would hold out here. Um, you don't need to chase. All right, it sucks that we weren't triggered. That's okay. Can always get back in um, somewhere else or later down the line or whatever. So that's kind of where my head's at on that one. And don't forget, there's other opportunities to trade this, right? If we do trade lower and bounce off the 2930, then we'd probably be looking for resistance back on the median line, especially if the market consolidates around here for a little bit. Okay, Pooja asking a about Euro Aussie, let's take a look. Okay. All right. So this is the fork that's been underway uh, in Euro Aussie. So this is a shift fork. Okay. Do like that. We'll actually we'll go to take it to a different uh, all 
All right. So you can draw it along with me if you'd like. So this is the one we've got for a while. Um, I'm going to draw this right here. And shift. And we had logs. No, we didn't. Okay. All right. So you're at a pretty big spot here, right? In terms of Euro Aussie. Um, this is the center line of that whole thing. Trade it up to a new high. This would be weekly now, okay, working on a little bit of a reversal. What I would look for here, because we have had uh, quite a run, I wouldn't be looking, I'd be looking for support probably down a, a drop from here, probably down near one. 160.50 or so. That's that low from uh, the fourth. And there are good supports on there, right? Like, this is not the cleanest fork by any means. Um, it's it's pretty sloppy, you know, actually. But there are some good touches on it, you know. Like, this is pretty sloppy. In fact, let's see if we can get something a little cleaner. If we draw from – see what happens if we draw from here. Well, that's just not enough history. Yeah, for me, so this is a lesson in itself. When I have to sit here and play with a chart too much, right, it kind of tells me that I uh, probably shouldn't be trading it, right? It either sticks out at you or it doesn't. And in this one, you know, if you just look at it from a horizontal basis, like, look, we have some major resistance up here. I mean, here's highs, right? September 2015, February 2016, right? You've taken out these these highs and now you're starting to reverse below them. Not to mention the big trend line all the way back to 2012 and 2015, okay? So one more time, we'll stick with this real quick. Yeah, so I would continue to stick with this, okay? So now we're looking at a four-hour chart. Um, so Pooja, I would be looking at, you know, I would I would stick with this original interpretation of that. Like, you know, I'd be kind of looking lower here, but not 
confidently. I mean, I don't even know if I'd say I'd be looking lower. I'd just be like not wanting to buy it right here, right? Because we are in that long-term resistance. At the same time, if you did drop down to the 160, you know, 40, 160, 50 area, that would be one where I would look for support. Okay. Um, and, you know, understanding again that we are coming from a really big resistance area, like a longer term resistance area. Okay. So as it stands right now, I don't think there's much to do um, on your Aussie, at least from my standpoint, there's not. All right. Okay, so there's your Aussie. Uh, is there anything else? That you guys would like to take a look at. The battle lines are most certainly drawn at this point, right? I mean, we have got the dollar, literally pressing the issue. We've got gold. also pressing the issue so here we are in september as the markets tend to get a little more active hasn't really been the case this year right uh so far we're about half almost halfway through the month so wait for ecb boe to get out of the way but we are you know we're there we are gold pressing resistance dollars pressing support you know equities i believe might be trying to bottom for another run higher that nasdaq chart big support um you know so we know where the risk is where the levels are uh and and yeah let's see if let's see if we can let's see if the dollar can finally break this damn support that we've been testing for so long okay that's it for me don't forget about this cool little analog here right and again this is more scientifically done because i'm not just lining it up in some crazy you know, thing on my chart. I'm actually putting the data in and comparing it, and it looks pretty cool. So we'll follow this as long as we can, but you know, we'll throw this out the window if it doesn't start to work. Like we, the market's got to go. Nasdaq, in particular, has got to go crazy for the next, you know, month or so, um, and then we could have the potential for something uh, crazy to happen on the downside. All right, I'll get this archive for you again tonight. Uh, update might be a little later than usual due to a family event. Uh, but, um, you know, we'll do my best to get it out as early as possible. Okay. Thank you all again. Thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your week. All right. Bye.